Hello and welcome. My name is Kelly Wayman with FindingTimeToCreate.com. Welcome to the Silhouette YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel so you're notified of any of the future projects that we make. Today we are going to be making a floral paper wreath. So this is a fun paper project. This has um, quite a few flowers and leaves on it. Uh, it looks impressive, but it's actually fairly simple. So I'm going to go through the software so you know how to cut all the pieces and we will cut all the pieces and then we'll assemble the entire project. So this will be a fun project. Let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that you'll need. So we, as far as tools go, we're gonna use the Silhouette Cameo and you do need the Cameo or Cameo Pro or Cameo Plus. You need the larger, at least 12 inch size machine because we're going to be cutting full 12 by 12 inch sheets of paper. Um, and you will need a cutting mat and an auto blade or your favorite one millimeter blade. We will use a steel ball shaper tool. This is not essential, but if you do a lot of paper flowers, you're gonna find this tool is handy. Um, really any size works. This is probably about a centimeter tip on the front side and maybe eight millimeters on the back side, something around there. Um, we will use a strong white craft glue and we will also use a hot glue gun. Uh, the hot glue gun, you'll need a low temperature glue um, just because it sets a little faster. Um, we'll also use, for the centers of our flowers, these are just wooden beads that I've painted to match. So you can use anything for the centers of your flowers. This is a uh, 12, me 12 millimeter ball and an eight millimeter ball for the different centers, um, for the different sizes of flowers. But you can use pom-poms, you can use felt balls, uh, wool balls, you can use rhinestones, whatever you want. Um, it, it just depends on how you want your design to look. So I'm just using painted wood beads. We will also use a scraper tool to help with the shaping of our flowers. And then as far as paper, we are going to use several colors um, that will work for flowers. So this is actually a plain white cardstock that I'm going to use for the largest white flower. And then I have a yellow center, a dark coral for the larger flowers, kind of a lighter coral for the tiny flowers, and two shades of green. And these all come in a coordinated paper pack. So I find that really helpful um, if you're just buying a paper pack um, that's already coordinating colors. That's a really nice way to make sure that your colors match. And these are all about a 65 pound cardstock or 65 pound um, pattern paper. This one says 67 pounds. That's all good. Uh, if you do a heavier cardstock, it's gonna be harder to shape. So that's just what I recommend. Um, and then finally, we'll use some chipboard for the base of the wreath. This is just silhouette chipboard and it's quite thin, which makes it really easy to cut. So if you want your base to be thick, you might just cut two rings of this thinner chipboard and glue it together. Or, it, or you can use a thicker chipboard and just cut uh, one thicker piece. So just some chipboard that's gonna be your base and it's not important what it looks like. You're gonna cover the entire thing. So even if you used like a cereal box or something that you uh, cut apart and then cut with your machine, that would also be fine. So that's all we need for supplies. And we will go ahead and go into the software. So here we are in Silhouette Studio. Um, the design we're using today is one from Pebbles in My Pocket, and I have already purchased it. So I'm gonna go into the library. And this is design ID number 297432. It's also called Floral Wreath. So this is what it's gonna look like uh, when you purchase the design. And it has a little bit of instructions, but I'm gonna go through all of that today to help you out. And again, you can use any colors of cardstock you want. They've obviously gone with more of a yellow theme and I'm going with more of a, a pink and coral theme. So just double click to open. 
and you have all these pieces here and it is grouped so the first thing we'll do is ungroup it and you can find ungroup in the quick access toolbar there's a lot of ways to do it but I'm just going to use it in the quick access toolbar and now these pieces are able to be uh, divided up you can see they've each got their own little bounding box um, one piece you need to pay attention to is this white flower its cut mark is a separate slit that is not grouped when you ungroup the entire thing. So make sure the first thing you do is you select this white flower and its little cut line and go up and click group in the quick access toolbar. And now when we move it, that uh, slice will stay with the piece it needs to. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll move this first uh, white flower over to the virtual cutting mat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the page with this shape. So if you go over here to your replicate panel over here on the right, it looks like a bunch of overlapped ovals. Click that and you have an option here that says fill page. So if you click that, it's going to fill up our 12 by 12 inch uh, page. Uh, I should mention that if we're in the page setup panel and you're using your Cameo, you need to make sure that you have that selected as your machine, your 12 by 12 inch cutting mat selected, and your media size should be set to 12 by 12. And that way the fill page command will work with the correct page size. So back to the replicate panel. Once I've gotten my page filled, this is actually exactly the right number for this wreath. We needed nine of these large white flowers, so I'm just going to group them. And I can slide them off to the side and save them for later. The next piece we're gonna bring over to the virtual mat is the next size down of flower. And the same thing, just click fill page, and that fills it with 12, which is the right number for our project. So select all of those and click group, and we'll move those off to the side. Now we will move this smallest flower over here. And same thing, you can click fill page. I will also tell you that a shortcut for fill page is when you have that object selected, just hit your control or command if you're using a Mac and your shift key and the letter F for fill. And that will also fill your page just as a quick shortcut. Now, I found that I did not need all of these flowers for my wreath. You can cut all of them um, just in case you want to have full all, all of your options available to you. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut maybe three rows of this. So I'm going to group that and then I'm gonna delete the rest. Again, if you wanna make sure you have enough, you can just cut the full page. Um, but once you've done the fill page command, then it's easy to uh, make the, the adjustments as needed. And we'll do that again with the leaf. So we've got the leaf on the page, we've got it selected, we'll click fill page. And this is not quite enough leaves, and I can see that there are a lot of spaces that I can use to fill in. And so what I will do when I get to this is I'm going to fill in myself more rows. So I will take this end one on the second row and I will select it and delete it just with my delete key. And then if I move these leaves up onto to kind of nestle in there with the uh, row above it, then I have more room. I can bring these up and then I actually have room for two more rows. So if I, quick way to do this, I'm gonna select each row at a time and group it. So I've selected just that row, group, select only the next row, group, select the next row down, group. And now if I select just the second and third rows, and since my replicate panel is still open, I can say duplicate over here and I just want to go duplicate below. And that will take both of those and du make a dupli duplicate right below it. So I can nestle these up a little bit. 
and I have room at the top, so I'm not worried too much about the, uh, I have these extra room at the top, and so I can select everything, and if I hit center to page, we'll see if that fits. Not quite, so I've got more room. I'll move this row down, I'll move this row up, so they're not touching the bottom of the page. Now if I select the whole thing, because I grouped those rows individually, I can choose in my Align choices of the Quick Access Toolbar, I can choose to space it vertically. And now I know I've got room at the top, room at the bottom, and I can see that none of these are touching or overlapping each other, so that is exactly what I want. Now if I select the whole thing and group it, I know that's going to fit on my page when I'm ready to cut. Okay, move those off to the side, and the final thing we're going to do is we need the centers for our large white flowers. So this, uh, we're only cutting nine large white flowers, so we only need nine of these. So I'm going to click on my Replicate panel, the tab for a row of three, and I can hold my Shift key and arrow that over just a little bit, maybe two spots, and I will space those horizontally. And now if I want to make a row of three, or a column of three, here it is on my uh, replicate panel. I've got these three circles selected. And now I'll hold my shift key so I can get that space back in there. The shift gives it a bigger bump with my arrow key than just the arrow key alone. So those are great. Uh, those will fit. I'm going to choose, select them all and choose group. And now those are ready to be cut for our centers of the flowers. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is this circle is exactly 12 inches by 12 inches. And so I'm worried my blade will maybe cut off the edge. And it's not really a problem because you're not going to see this wreath, but I just like to have it within my cut borders completely. So I'm going to resize it just a little bit with my lock button selected. So it's uh, locking the aspect ratio. I can change either of these values. And I'm going to type in 11.9, enter, and that will change both of those. And now when I center this to the page, I've got just a little bit of room uh, for that to cut uh, without going off the page. All right, so that is all we need to do for setting up in the software. And at this point, we're just going to go back and forth uh, to actually cut these pages. So we're going to start with the white flower. I can just select it there. And since it's all grouped together and I know it's going to fit on my page, I'm going to click Center to Page. And that's just going to put it exactly where I need it for cutting. So we'll go to the Send tab. We're going to use, except for the chipboard ring, we're going to use the same settings for all of these um, colored pieces. So I want uh, pattern paper medium. You could you actually choose any uh, cardstock or paper setting because we're going to adjust it a little bit. Um, I just have it already on pattern paper medium, so we'll go with that. I want it to cut, and I already have my auto blade inserted. Um, I'm going to set my blade depth to four, and my force I will usually go between 30 and 33 for this, and my speed. Um, we're going to go a little bit faster today just because there's so much to cut, but I recommend you start on a speed of five. We'll see how that does and then maybe we'll, we'll set that to five and then uh, we can speed it up as long as it's cutting well. Okay, so at this point all I need to do is load my white paper onto my mat and then I will click send. Okay, so I've got my, I've got my white piece of paper. Just take off my shield here and save that keep my mat clean and we'll just place it on the mat and that's ready to load so we'll just hit the load button 
and then make sure that you've got the left edge of your mat aligned with the marked loading line. If you've never cut this, your material before, I suggest doing the test cut feature in the software, but I've already tested this and I'm just going to click send. All right, so we'll check this and see if it cut all the way through. It looks like it did. So we'll go ahead and unload that. And then we will peel these off the mat. And I will typically flip my mat over as I'm pulling these off. Okay, and now I have my nine large flowers. And we'll go ahead and do the dark pink. All right, so this is kind of a dark pink or a dark coral. Place that on my mat. And I can go ahead and get that loaded before I go back to the software and it'll just be ready. All right, so in the software, we'll just move this white uh, design off to the side and I will select the one that I know is my uh, next color and click center to page. This is kind of the butterfly shape. It won't look like a butterfly when we're done, but it looks like a butterfly right now. And go back to the send tab. And since that cut fine, I'm gonna bump up the speed just because I am familiar with my um, cutting settings, I think it's gonna be great. So it's already loaded and I'll click send. Alright, so that's done cutting. Unload it and take these off. It's always fine to curl your mat. It doesn't hurt it. You don't want creases in it, but it's fine to curl quite a bit. That way your mat does the curling instead of your paper. Okay, so we've got this group of flowers. And the next color we will do is um, this lighter coral or whatever you're using for your smallest flowers. So I'll get that loaded. So that one is done cutting. So with these, I've got this page that has given me a nice slice already. And so I can throw this part away and save this one for another project. And I don't have to deal with a paper trimmer. And then we'll just pull off these little ones and move on to the next. All right, so the next color we'll do is one of our pages of leaves. So whatever green cardstock you're using, get that loaded. And in the software, back to the design tab, and we can delete this little line here. 
move those over and we'll bring this set of leaves over center to page go back to the send tab and this is all cutting really well so I am going to cut this a little faster and click send Alright, so since we didn't, since these leaves can be cut in exactly the same position, all I need to do is place my new piece of paper on my mat and load it. And, all I'm, and I'm just going to click send in the software um, because it's the same, the same set of leaves. Alright, our last color that we're going to be cutting is the yellow center for the white flowers. And as you remember, we only had a small uh, section of nine circles, and so this partial piece of paper is going to be plenty of room for those. So in the software, we'll go to the design tab. We'll drag those leaves off. We don't need them anymore. And then we will drag these circles up to the upper left corner. And I know that that paper I placed on my mat is um, seven inches. And I can just turn on my grid really quick, tap the letter G, and I can see that I definitely have at least seven inches. This is going to fit on that paper. So I'll turn my grid back off with the letter G and just go to the Send tab. Same settings and click send. So now the only thing left is our chipboard. So this is the silhouette chipboard that's exactly 12 by 12, which is good because our circle is, as you recall, 11.9 inches. This does take a little bit different cut setting, so I'll show you that after we get it loaded. All right, so if I go to my design tab and move those off and then select just my circle. And I can choose center to page again. And if I go to the Send tab, there is a setting for chipboard. So I just need to scroll down and find chipboard. And this is suggesting a blade depth of six or of four, which I think might be a little light. So I'm going to try it on a five. And this force is 33. That's good. This does need two passes at least. Um, and then the speed, when you're cutting something thick, a low speed is good. So that's on one. I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to three, but I probably would not go higher than three. And uh, we'll, we'll just check that and see if it cuts all the way through on a blade of five. So we'll see if that cut all the way through, and it did, so that's perfect. All right, so I would go ahead and cut one more piece if you're using thin chipboard, and you can just glue it, stack it, and glue it together. Uh, and then if you're using a thick piece of chipboard, you would want to make sure that uh, your blade settings are deeper. And I recommend um, multiple passes if you're cutting something thick. So we cut this on two passes. If it was thicker, we could go another t three or four passes if we needed to, uh, as long as your blade is uh, extended about the thickness of the material. 
Okay, so now we have these pieces and I have started to assemble some of this for you to save some time. So I'm gonna bring over my piles. I'm going to show you how to shape and glue everything, uh, but I'm gonna save a little bit of time uh, so you don't have to watch me do every single flower, every single leaf. All right, so what I've done is I have got my uh, two layers of the thin chipboard, and again, you could use one layer if you want. And we're gonna start with the leaves. We're gonna fill in a little bit um, with the leaves. I've got this started a little bit. Uh, and these leaves are just creased in half. So if you have a scraper tool, you can just, you're basically trying to make a crease from tip to tip. So if it's just, if you don't have anything to help support, you can just do this on your hand. And this is the silhouette scraper tool. It's a little bit shorter than the leaf itself. So you do basically need a couple of presses. Uh, if you have a soft surface like craft foam, you don't have to use your hand. So we'll just press once, twice to connect that and then crease it in half. So we'll do that with all of the leaves, both colors. Just a crease from tip to tip and then fold in half. Pretty simple, right? So I've got these leaves already all creased for you. And so let's talk a little bit about the other uh, flower shapes. We'll get these, all the flowers assembled before we start to attach them to the wreath actually. So the white flower, you're just going to take, it's got that slit and you're going to use this petal on the right side of the slit and it's just going to completely cover the petal to the left of the slit. And that makes just kind of a gentle cone shape so we'll just add a little hot glue. And hot glue is not always my choice for flowers, for paper flowers, because it's a little bit clunky, but these are big flowers and the hot glue holds them instantly and it's a strong hold. And it doesn't tend to show up on these big flowers. So just a little bit of hot glue on the petal and bring those two uh, petals together to cover one over the other. And I'll just do one more to show you, but you can go ahead and keep going and finish all nine of your flowers. So that hot glue means we don't have to sit there and hold it. Uh, the next step though, for putting the flower centers on these white flowers, we are gonna use white glue. And the reason I'm using white glue is because um, the white glue gives you a little bit of time to position that flower in place. If you're using hot glue, there's a lot bigger chance of uh, having that placed in the wrong area or uh, not being able to slide it, uh, and it and it could show through. So uh, white glue, just for these centers, and I'm just adding it all along the outside edge of the circle. And then place it in the center. And because it's white glue, you've got a little bit of time that you can kind of turn it and see if that looks centered. And then you're just going to kind of pinch to make sure that contact is being made all the way around with the glue for the two pieces. So there's one. We'll do another one. Just white glue all the way around. And this type of glue also, it's a type that dries clear. So even if it does seep out a little around the edges as you're placing those on, it's not going to show up 
uh, for your final once it's dried. So kind of turn and pinch that and you have a little bit of time to reposition it if it doesn't look centered. And don't worry if it doesn't get completely centered because when you've got this many flowers on a big wreath, you're not going to notice any individual flowers that aren't perfect. You see the whole uh, arrangement at once. And so uh, don't worry about little flaws in individual flowers. By the time you get the whole thing put together, you won't see any of those little individual flaws. Okay, so that's the last center I will show you. Just make sure you get good contact there between the two layers. And we'll set that aside. Okay, so the next color of flower are these dark uh, coral flowers. These again are very similar. Um, you're going to take the one petal on the right side of the slit and overlap it on top of the petal with the left on the left side of the slit. And again, just a hot glue gun. Low temperature is nice because it holds really fast. And if you do get a little bit on your fingers, it doesn't uh, doesn't hurt as much as high temperature hot glue. So I'm just squeezing that glue together. So those glued sides are together. We'll do that a few more times. If you get a little bit of glue peeking through on in the center, don't worry about that because we are going to cover that up. We're not doing a lot of shaping with these with this wreath arrangement because we're not going for true realism right now. Uh, this is just a, a cute wreath. We're using pattern paper, so it's not going to look completely uh, realistic, but it is going to look cute and pretty. Okay, last one that I'm going to show you. Make sure that's got a good hold. Okay, and then we are going to put the centers of these. Um, these are going to be the larger balls. So this is a this is a 12 millimeter bead. And again, like I mentioned, oh, when I was going through the supplies, you can use anything for this. I just thought these wooden beads that I painted with the similar color looked really good. So just a little bit of glue directly to the bead and then just stick it in there. And what I'm trying to do is not make the holes show. So I've got the holes of this bead facing to the side. And if you're using something like a, a pom pom or a, a wool felt ball, uh, you're not going to have to worry about holes. But Again, when you see the whole wreath together, you're not going to notice little, little imperfections. If you find tweezers help you with this, instead of using your fingers near the hot glue, you can try tweezers also. I'll just show you two more of this flower, and then you can keep going to finish your own to get all 12 of this size done. Now one thing I did do on my uh, large wreath is I did put a little bit of curl in the tips of these flowers. So if you just roll your thumb and press along your scraper tool, it's just a little bit and 
just gives it a little bit of personality and you absolutely don't have to do that. You can just leave them straight. Uh, you may not notice it in the end, but I kind of like a little curl in my petals. All right, so there's that medium set of flowers. And then for the smallest flowers, uh, we're just gonna use these tiny little uh, beads that are painted the same color. And let me show you how I shaped these flowers. This is where we'll use the uh, steel ball shaping tool. So again, you could do this on your hand or if you've got a little piece of craft foam laying around. We're gonna flip it over and on the back side, we're just gonna take the larger end of the shaping tool and just press down on the tips and that's gonna add just a little bit of curve to uh, the petals and then you'll flip it over and turn it to the smaller side and just roll it around in the center so it kind of cups upward and so on the back side give a little press on the top edge of each petal and then flip it over use the smaller tool to add a little bit of a of a upward cupping for the entire design. If you've only got one size of ball, that's fine. You don't even have to shape them at all. And that's completely optional. I just like to give a little bit of shape to my flowers. So let's see, I believe I ended up using 10 of these little flowers, 10 or 12 of these little flowers on my full wreath. It's nice to have a few extra made so you can add them as necessary. So let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we'll just make 10 and then I can add more. I have the pieces cut so I can just make some more if I need to. So just same thing, we, want, we don't want the hole facing up, we want the hole kind of facing to the side if you're using a bead and We'll use just a little bit of hot glue. You can either add it to the bead itself or you can just add a little dab of glue in the center of the flower. And then place the bead on top of it. And this is one of those where you might see a little bit of glue sticking out the side, but when you look at the whole wreath together, you're not really gonna notice the a little bit of glue peeking out. So we'll just do one more of these. Okay, so now 
let's move on to putting them on our wreath. So all the flowers are glued together and shaped. They have their centers. We've already folded all of our leaves. And I've got this started a little bit. Um, so you can kind of see that this is not perfectly arranged. It's kind of going in different directions. Um, they don't have to be alternating one color or the other. You're just going to place them on there and it, it looks nice. Once the whole thing is done, it's fine if they're going in different directions. So we'll just start putting these on, just a little dab on the end of your leaf. And then you're kind of gluing uh, about in the center of, of your ring here. But if it goes, if it's a little taller or a little shorter, that doesn't matter too much. So you're generally alternating colors, but for me, I did not want them to be exactly uh, one of the darker green and then one of the lighter green exactly. Um, they just need to have a little bit of variation. Now, if you leave some gaps, a lot of this is gonna get colored so you don't have to fill that in tightly. These flowers are going to cover it. And then we're also going to have some leaves left over. So if you do end up seeing the chipboard underneath after you've added the flowers, um, you can add more leaves at that time. All right, so you can see that we have not used all of the leaves that we cut. So that leaves room. We can add more. A lot of this uh, chipboard is still exposed and that's totally fine because we want room to put the flowers and we can always add more leaves in later if we need to fill things in. So we'll set the green leaves aside and we are going to put the largest flowers on first. So these white flowers, at this point it's, um, you can just kind of place them on without gluing. and just see how they look. So you can cluster them in three. I kind of like two together and then one and then two more close together and one, two more and one. So it's just uh, trying to keep things balanced overall. And this can be however you want to do it. So this we're just gonna hot glue straight on to the uh, chipboard or leaf, whatever point it will stick down. So just a little bit of hot glue on the back. And we'll just do this. You will need to hold it a little bit while it cools um, to get that if you want it to stand up because it tends to fall over if you uh, just glue it and leave it but it shouldn't take more than a few seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue all of these on generally in the place that I have uh, rested them for the moment. All right, so now I have my largest flowers on and the rest of the flowers are really just gonna be filling in space um, from where I placed the first set. So. Um, these medium sized flowers, they look good kind of as clusters of two. Um, if you have a large gap, it might look good with a group of three. And then some of these, maybe just one will look best. So again, I'll just kind of dry fit these. They don't have to be pointing straight up. They can, they can tilt off a little to the side. And if you rotate your wreath partway through, that kind of can help you visualize it just a little bit different so you can see where you might like uh, a change or where there needs to be a different flower.
Okay, so I think that's going to look pretty good. So I'll go ahead and get these glued on the same way. Just a little dab of glue on the bottom and hold them in place until that glue cools and they set. All right, so here's our last of the medium colored flowers. And you can see how that really is coming together with this fun, fun colors. And all we're gonna do for the smallest flowers, we only made 10. So I'm gonna start by filling in little bare spots. Um, and then you can choose whether to fill in the rest of it with little flowers or leaves, because either are gonna look pretty good. So I'm just gonna fill in spaces where I see, and we could dry fit this or we can uh, just go ahead and go for it and glue them in. These ones are a little bit, these are fun to balance a little higher on the leaves if you have a chance. I think I will go ahead and place these mostly where I want them before I glue them. And you can always finish making more of the little flowers. All right, I think I'm gonna add one more little leaf in there. Just to fill in. This is where you would look and see if you need any more leaves. Place my last little flower. I hope you enjoyed making this project with me. Make sure that you post any questions or comments in the comment section below. Maybe give me more ideas on what classes you would like to see um, so you can craft along more with me. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.